Good morning. This is SK Gaush. I would like to welcome you to our web seminar this morning. Uh, the topic is seismic design using structural dynamics. The material presented today is all contained in this publication from us that has been around from the UBC days actually. We, we update it periodically as our codes change. The starting point I think is that we, we have in AC7 which is adopted by the IBC which is the basis now of, of almost all legal codes. We have for seismic design purposes equivalent lateral force procedure and dynamic analysis procedures. The equivalent lateral force procedure is allowed to be used under certain restrictions. Dynamic analysis is always permitted to be used but is sometimes required to be used. That is the key thing. Sometimes it is required to be used, meaning that in those situations you are not allowed to use the equivalent lateral force procedure. Now when we talk about dynamic analysis in AC7, we have modal response spectrum analysis and we also have seismic response history analysis. Now, uh, response history analysis means we subject the base of our structure or more precisely the base of a mathematical model of our structure to recorded or artificial earthquake ground motions. And we uh, compute the response of the structure uh, to that uh, history of, of ground motion input. This can be done using structural dynamics and the computer hardware and software we have today if in the process, if in that analysis we assume that our structure remains elastic through its response to the input ground motions, then it is elastic response history analysis which is quite often not all that terribly realistic because the normal structures we design become inelastic or are expected to become inelastic in places under design earthquake ground motion. If we want to recognize that fact that certain uh, regions of certain structural members are going to become inelastic, are going to undergo inelastic displacements in the design earthquake ground motion, then, it, then we are going to do inelastic response history analysis, which is the most, uh, that, that's about as far as we can go today with our analysis procedures. Now, uh, the entire discussion in this seminar will be restricted to the modal response spectrum analysis, which uh, has traditionally been the, uh, the way most design offices have done uh, dynamic analysis when required to do so. That is kind of changing uh, in favor of uh, uh, the inelastic response history analysis, particularly in the uh, bigger or high-end offices. But uh, I still believe that modal response spectrum analysis is, is significantly more popular than response history analysis. Our publication and the seminar are about this this procedure, this analysis procedure, and and we uh, undertook to put together the publication because of uh, many many questions we have received. The what is required in the in the process of this analysis is somehow not fully understood or widely understood. So that's what motivated us to uh, 
come up with a publication and, and, and seminars based on the publication. Now, ASCE 7 